friends, I had an, an inspiration of how to paint your pet super easy, should be really fun. I was hoping you could see the traceable I have on my computer monitor back here, but I think it's way too bright. Okay, let's get going. All right, here's what I'm thinking. This is a photo either I took or my favorite daughter took of her cat, Maya. Um, I did put it in Photoshop and darken the corners just so you could see these whiskers a little bit better. But just any profile of your pet will work. Um, you can scale it to any size, crop it to any size you like. Uh, you don't have to darken the background to see it. And then you can see this photo's blurry and it's not terribly well lit. Actually, it looks better when I look through my uh, phone camera here than it does in person. And then I just, um, you can take a plain piece of paper. You don't have to take graph paper. So I took a plain piece of paper, or I took graph paper, but you could do a plain piece of paper. And I lined it up underneath with the grid and you could tape it to a window, you could put it on a light table, and I just traced the outline, including the whiskers. Isn't that simple? And I think we'll paint a simple background, and I'm gonna probably paint it, you could paint it any color, actually. Yellow might not work so well, because what I'm gonna do is on top of the painted background, paint white little zigzaggy strokes for the outline, so you just have a silhouette painting. So it could make a cute gift, it could make a cute card, it could make, uh, a sweet memorial. I'm, you know, sorry you lost your pet card. Um, if you know how to make t-shirts out of it, you just can't sell it because it's my copyrighted art or well, and this is my daughter's cat, but you could do it with your own pet really easily. You just need a photo and a profile works best because then you can see the nose and the ears and then you make it, you trace it. And then if you are a cat lover, or you just want to paint cats. I put a traceable up on my website. I decided I'm gonna do ultramarine blue. And I don't use this color very often, light blue violet. And I'm using the ultramarine blue. I don't think you can see it on the um, video, but that's a really smooth color. Maybe if I turn it, it's nighttime, so I'm getting some shadows. But this is kind of, and it's too dark, I think. You can see it's kind of a little chunky. It's getting old, I need to buy new. Um, and then I, if I didn't mention, this is a five by seven canvas board from Michaels. Um, you could paint on anything you want, any size you want. Oh, and if you're gonna paint it like a light background or a yellow background, then just we'll use a dark color for the traceable part when we get to this that stage. And I'm gonna try and paint this in real time. So let's get going. The traceables are available on my website. You can download them for free. Um, I, you know, I ask that you send a dollar if you can afford it to help support more videos and more traceables. Um, recently, a lady sent me, uh, I guess I won't say how much, but it was just so nice. She sent more than a dollar and it was just so nice of her. Ooh, that's really, really a strong color. I so appreciate you guys' support. I couldn't do all this art stuff without all of you guys. And then let me know what you think. A lot of people want to do their pets and they, they a pet portrait can be a really hard step to take. Um, depending on how long you've been painting. Yeah, that, that violet. So one trick, well, it's sort of a trick. I was gonna set this down and I realized it's gonna, I guess it really won't hurt anything. It's gonna get um, paint on my, I've just got a piece of loose canvas on top of my table to protect it. Uh, one trick is to like get a palette knife wet with a little bit of water on it and then just kind of, you could mist it, but this way it kind of pushes the water down into the old paint. Sometimes that works a little bit. So I'm just gonna paint a swirly background and I'll probably stop here in a little bit and dry it with a hair dryer and I'm picking it up so hopefully it's not too wiggly for you guys so I can paint the edges. So 
So I would love to hear, a lot of us have fuzzy loved ones. You know, do you have cats? Do you have dogs? I recently did a bearded dragon pet portrait, which was really fun. Um, his name was Angus. <laughs> it's like, so cute. I remember I had a newt, I had a fish tank when I was first married and I had a fire belly newt that was really neat. I don't remember, I know I had some neon fish. I don't know if you guys remember those neon fish. I'm sure they're still around. I haven't had a fish tank in quite a long time. And I love dogs, but I've never had, had a dog um, as a pet just because I didn't wanna clean up the yard. You know, it'd be good to get me to go for a walk, but I didn't wanna take it for a walk. Always had cats. Oh, I've got a paint, uh, pet portrait of my cat on my website. Her name's Freckles. Sometimes I refer to her as president and CEO of my business. Okay, I'm getting too fussy with this. You don't need to be that fussy. I guess I'm just thinking I want it darker. I really am not, probably didn't need that color. And then that ultraviolet just doesn't want to pick up. Try a little bit more water. There we go. Because I want it dark, nice and darkish, if that's a art term, so that it shows the cat's whiskers. Of course, and I need to also remember, which I tell you guys quite often, acrylics dry darker. Oops, I got a hunk. Hunk on the back side there. Okay, I think I'm gonna dry this with a hair dryer. And I'll be back. Oh wait, it looks much darker when I look through my phone. Alrighty, I'm back. Dried it with a hair dryer. So it's, um, it feels dry to me to the touch, but it can take acrylic paint several days to cure. So like if I went over and really worked an area, it may lift back up. Um, I don't think it will here right now, but sometimes when you're painting, um, as acrylics start to dry, then they'll start to lift. So you just have to leave that area alone and then come back to it later. Well, I think I want some of this color in there just to cover the canvas a little bit better. And then we'll come back with some darker again. So I got the I, the inspiration for this idea. Um, silhouettes aren't a new thing. I had one, I think I was in a kindergarten. Uh, we all took a turn, sat in front of a, a projector, the light, and then there was uh, the teacher or the teacher's assistant uh, drew on black construction paper, I think is what it was, um, our silhouette. And then we just cut it out. I don't know if they framed it or we had, we had one framed in my home, I think. I gotta ask my dad. I think my brothers and I all had that done. And I'm thinking it was kindergarten. And I saw somebody post something like that online. And I thought, oh, that could just be a fun, relaxing, um, easy way to, you know, do a portrait of your own pets. Um, even if you're a super accomplished artist, you know, lots of years under your belt, it's still pretty fun to do a project like this. And of course you could paint it much bigger than five by seven. I just wanted to use one of my canvas boards. So all I'm thinking here is I want the bottom darker than the top. And I think for that ultramarine, I definitely need to remember to buy more It's sticky and fighting me. Okay. I like to play, so I'm probably spending way more time than I need to on this, but I just, whoops, I didn't want that dark up there. Um, 
I think this is one of the most fun things to do is just to paint a, a swirly loose background. If you want a more serious background or more serious colors, or if you want something that gradates different colors, you know, you absolutely do whatever you want. Okay, so now I'm thinking that most of this background is going to show through. So make sure it's kind of interesting. All right, I think we're good as I keep playing. <laughs> I don't know why that bothered me right there. I'm getting some dry brushing. I don't know if you can see that on the video. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm kind of wanting a waterier, wetter look. All right, I'm gonna dry this now. Okay, so I've cut out my traceable. Um, I just printed out at 100% size because I set it up as a five by seven. Um, I have links that show you if you wanna scale it up or you can play with printing it at smaller percentages to scale it down. And I'm gonna try, this is white chalk pastel. So you can see, even in the video, you can see, I'm running out of a little bit of real estate here and scoot that up. Um, I think here you can even see the outline through it or you could hold it up to a window. You could use black, it would still show on that blue. I'm just, I rarely use white, so I thought I would give it a shot since that's such a nice dark blue color. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm scribbling so hard, I'm shaking my art table there. I've got my uh, phone and a video arm on hooked to a side table, so it doesn't wiggle very often, but my art table isn't very sturdy. Okay. I'm just gonna shake the extra dust in a garbage can. And then one thing, a little tip, trick. So in this situation, I don't know, it doesn't look that much darker on the video. Have a darker color at the bottom and a little bit lighter colors at the top. And then you can also keep your corners darker. That color corner isn't darker, but that one's darker. It just kind of helps keep your eye in the painting. Just a little, little artist trick. And I'm going to take some masking tape. You can use artist tape. I just happen to have the masking tape on the top. And then I'm going to stick it to my fuzzy sweatshirt. So it's not quite so sticky. Artist tape's a little more gentle with paper and things. But even it can be a little, a little sticky too. And then you could stick it straight on, just line it up. I'm thinking I want to ooch mine over just a little bit. I want it just a little, in case I get a little crazy with my whiskers. <laughs> I wonder if I want it a little more. You can put it on however you like. Now let's hope that white, white chalk works. And then you just take a ballpoint pen. I'm gonna hold this down because you can see it kind of likes to puff up. Oh, and then my table's wiggling. And then I kind of go back and forth. I don't, I don't press too terribly hard. And I don't know if you even need to go back and forth. And then I'm gonna lift this up. Oh yeah, it's working. Okay, I'm gonna trace the whole thing and I'll be back. Hey, while I'm thinking of it, I thought of something. So I don't know if you can see, but I left off, she's not quite profile. And I left off this ear. I kind of just came out just a little bit more with the traceable. And then if, instead of coming right here on her forehead, I just came in just a smidge because it would be a little bit smaller and then just followed the rest. And I think it looks great. 
Um, you could leave the ear in if you wanted to. It's just a little thought, depending on how good of a photo you can get. Because pets don't always cooperate when you're trying to photograph them. <laughs> but I think, I think that works. Let's see if I can get them both on camera. I think it works just to have one ear. We'll see how this turns out when we, when we paint it. Okay, and then what I'm, all we're going to do next is I've got a little number one Simply Simmons. Um, it says round. Gosh, it's almost a liner brush. It's really little. Oh, hey, we got to take the traceable off. Oh, one, one other tip too is I could feel it when I was doing the traceable. Maybe wait till the next day because I could feel that the paint was a little sticky. And then the chalk sometimes then will stick to the um, paint and it won't wash off as easily. Uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to use white, in case I can't get it off. I'm gonna see if I can lighten it. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is a little rough tonight. I was gonna see if I can lighten this a little bit. This is a kneaded eraser, which I've shown in a bunch of videos and I usually pull this out because I haven't opened this one up yet. Looks like that. They're about a dollar, depending on the size. <clears throat> Excuse me guys, I'm gonna take a drink. Okay. Just lighten this up a little bit. Oh, and another thing too is I didn't um, draw absolutely every whisker. You can edit out things to make it look a little bit cuter. Oops, that really erased it. Okay. <clears throat> and then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet. I've got way too much white out here. Did not need that. And then all we're gonna do, so I'm gonna start, since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna start over here. We're just gonna paint. I was kind of wiggling and I might need a little more paint. Just little zigzags. Maybe have a couple come in a little further. And that's all there is to it. We'll get some little ones here. You can go back and darken some up. Oh, I'm just kind of thinking. Because I think I want some. Oops. So I'm just grabbing just a smidge of water and I'm thinning out my white paint. Just a little bit. I like the heavy body. Just because if I want it thick, then it's thick. If I want it thin, I can add just a little bit of water to it. Oh, there's a nice thin one. Well, see, and what's good about this is it'll, it's a little eye hand control practice. Um, it's just a little, you know, loosen yourself up kind of practice. I wonder if we want that thicker, bigger. I've never done this before. I'm totally doing this right along with you guys. I've never painted this before. It was just an idea I had and I thought, I have some beginner painters that follow me on YouTube and I just thought this would be fun. Oh, and while I'm thinking of it, I think we want the nose to be straight, but I don't want to paint it because of my handle. I don't think we want fuzz on the nose. these. 
I'm just trying to be a bit random, which is um, always a challenge in art not to have everything be the same. Uh, I kind of like that better. Okay, let's make this. Sorry, I had a thought for a second there. I wondered if I was off camera. Let's start over again here. Oh, and then rolling your brush sometimes. Kind of roll it in the paint. A little bit of water in there too can give you a nice point. I kind of want that fatter. I think maybe we'll just do another coat. Then I think I want that little bump. How's that look? Pretty good. Do we need... I kind of want to here maybe if we put in some of these maybe that'll help me decide how thick to make those squiggly lines and if you miss one of the like there's a little one here, but if you miss it, you can just wash off the chalk pastel. If you use graphite, it won't wash off. Um, you could use Sor Sorel, S-A-R-A-L, carbon paper. Pretty sure, I've never used it, but I'm pretty sure that washes off. Um, you can use charcoal. I suppose you could use watercolor pencils. I've never tried that. I'm just sort of making a another batch of thinner paint. And I have a way, I put way too much white out. Like kind of old habits. Usually I go through a lot of white. Oh, I like that. That's kind of like her. I think I do want some of this thicker. <laughs> kind of like her chest hair there. <laughs> Sounds funny. Especially for a girl. So you guys will have to let me know what you think of this idea. If you make something I would love to see, if you don't mind sharing. Um, if you do something else with it have a creative creative idea that you do with it let me know oh and then we could even do the well, here let me do this one you put a little dot out here i'm gonna see if i can um isolate the white in photoshop and put this up on my, oh, there goes my voice again. Put this up on my Fine Art America uh, store and we could just have Silhouette Cat t-shirts out there. That'd be a lot of fun. I think that one goes longer. Not that it really matters. A little bit more water, thinning out my white again. That's turning out cute. I think I do want the stronger. Well, shoot, I'm changing my mind here. Let's um, let's finish. You can tell I'm loosening up. Let's finish this. And then I think I'll dry it with a hair dryer to give it another coat. 
and make it stronger in some areas. But that's basically it. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I dried it with a hair dryer. I'm a little worried to make it th thicker. Um, maybe I'll just, um, there, that's stronger. Instead of having like a little breaks in it. Kind of squiggle it in. Of course, if I didn't thin out my paint, it won't flow as well when I do the expressive lines, but it would cover better if I don't thin it out as much. Um, you can thin it out with like matte medium, um, gloss medium, but then it also makes it more transparent too. I think this could make a really cute gift. There, I think I like it stronger. You guys will have to let me know what you think if you make yours lighter. And then you could paint in just the nose. You could hint at the eye. You could, you know, as you do more of them, if you do them for your friends, your family, you could add just a hint. I'm pretty sure, where's my Maya photo? Oh yeah, you could, you could draw, see your ears quite open. You could draw in, actually I made her ear a little small, maybe. Oh, I guess I suppose it would come like this, so then it would look bigger. Oops, I kind of have blobby. I'm just wiggling and see now I'm going to make a little blob there. kind of clean my brush off. It should make it a bit easier. And you don't have to darken it up. I'm just thinking I'm going to need it darker for when I scan it in. I'll maybe I'll leave those two lighter and just leave those two lighter, darken that one. Oh. That's the, the scary part is if you go over it again, you might might not hit the exact same line. <laughs> oh, I kind of like that a little thicker.
Oh, you could leave gaps. Now that I fill this all in, maybe when I scan it in, I'll put some gaps in there, but I've got like a gap right here. It actually looks kind of nice rather than all the solid. You know, if you paint, when you, as you paint these, you learn things that you're gonna wanna do. And actually, oh, you know what I could do? Um, I wasn't gonna, I was thinking about showing you and then I didn't want to because I gotta wash off my brush here. We can just mix a blue. Oh, that ultramarine is sticky, sticky. Okay. Where would be a good place for a gap? Right at the base of the ear? Yeah, maybe we'll just put it right where it's dark here. You can put a gap back in. Looks like I guessed pretty darn close. wash up my brush really well now. So I get it wet, I put it on my paper towel and get out as much paint as I can. And then I wash it really well in one jar and then wash it in a second cleaner jar. You could switch brushes too. Okay, I think that's pretty darn good. I'm going to connect that gap. And you don't have to paint this darker if you like it looking light. You know, go ahead and leave that. You can see like, you know, so I think this is the top of her shoulder. So I'm assuming the fur would flip up. I don't actually. She's a really short hair cat, so you don't really see the fur flipping up at all. But it makes it a little more interesting, I think. And actually you could leave it going lighter here where it fades down to the bottom. I think we're done. Sign it. So I'm washing out my brush. Um, if I can tell it's winter, my paints are already drying. Uh, you can mist them with a little bit of water. Like, ooh, that's a really nice mister. And then I'll stick them, or I'll put another plate on top. And then I stick it in a gallon baggie and it's almost like a terrarium and the, the paints will kind of uh, get a little bit more moist again. Okay. I'm trying to decide how dark to go here. I don't want it super bright and stand out a ton. I know some artists make their signatures really bold. I put my initials on the front and then I sign the back. So it's sort of a two-factor authentication, you know, for those of you who are on your computers a lot. Um, but it's also just to keep my part of the painting. I want to sign the front so people can, if they say, oh, is that one of Annie's, they'll see my mark. Um, but I also don't want my signature, you know, screaming across the whole painting. Plus it's easier. It's easier to sign, just to put a mark on the front and sign the back. All right, let's see how that goes. Oh, and then bring it in in case you frame it. You know, usually there's a little overlap. And then I do A, of course, for Annie. 
Ooh, it's actually, let's so grab. It's darker than I thought it was. Oh, that was probably too much white. So we'll mix the whole puddle. Grabbing just a pinch of water. I want to thin it out. Okay, let's try that again. That's a little better. It should dry darker. So, so my initials A and T. And then one dot for favorite son. And one dot for favorite daughter. Okay, I think this is a really fun way to play with paints. Um, not worry too much about it. It's an excellent way to do a pet portrait and take the pressure off. I'm just, I'm really excited about that. Let me know if you guys are excited about that part too. Uh, I really appreciate you spending your time with me. Uh, all the likes, comments, subscribes, and shares. I think I'm up to 420 subscribers on YouTube. I can't believe it. Uh, what else do I need to say? Um, download the traceable. If you download, let me know. You don't have to, you don't have to, if you can't afford it, don't send the dollar, but let me know if you like this one so I'll do more like this. Great big art hugs. I hope this brightened your day and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye guys.